Hello, and welcome to Spicy Toast Gaming. Thank you for tuning in to another Spicy Toast Gaming video. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be covering Tom Kench and a cloning build for him, then taking that build into a Galio run and uh, seeing how it does. If you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe, I'm trying to still grow the channel as much as we can. All right, so the way this works, it's all based around his two star, uh, star power. When you capture a unit, create a copy of it in hand, it costs one less. So this works for any capture, any captures, but Tom Kench himself. Round start, create a acquired taste in hand. Acquired taste, swallows an enemy unit, and then he captures it. So this is a way that you can capture enemy units which will create a copy in hand that you can then play. His champion spell is Bayou Brunch. This lets you capture one of your own units, getting all of its stats, and then again is going to create a copy of it in hand. And because this is his champion spell, we're going with the Relic of um, Counterplan. So this is going to be creating a fleeting copy of Tom Kench in hand while he's on board, which then will turn into his champion spell. So we're going to be getting one of these Bayou Brunch every single round, in addition to the acquired taste. We're going with a Archangel Staff, that way we're refilling our spell mana, so we can hopefully have enough to play um, both of these spells. We're going with the Troll King's Crown, um, just so we can use all of our stats, make sure we're ending the game um, a little faster. This is gonna be a more of a um, slow, very control-based um, build. So we want the Troll King's Crown just to help speed it up a little bit so games don't draw on too long. Alright, let's go see how we can do uh, against Galio. Sorry if my voice uh, is a little off for this video. I think I'm getting uh, a little bit sick. Unstable. Unstable is pretty fun. Um, so short, sure, well, we'll go with that. Haven't actually gotten a legendary power for a while, so <laughs> not gonna complain about that. Hmm. So normally these are two cards that I don't bother with. Um, normally they just they cost too much. And I feel like they aren't worth the cost generally, but that black cleaver and um, mana crystal, whatever it's called. Yeah, we'll actually just stay with this. Alright, so we'll play our Boctopus. He'll have that uh, barrier, so they probably won't bother attacking. Yep. So normally if you summon, like, elusive units or barrier units, um, quite often, it's just going to keep the enemy from even attacking. All right, Citrus Courier got another Nomad's Redallion. That's pretty great. I think we'll drop the Sandhopper here. So when we capture enemy units, any items they have aren't carried over uh, when we create a copy of them in hand. However, for our own units, uh, the items do carry over, so that's pretty awesome. So we're not wanting to attack with our Boctopus here. We don't want him to die. Our ancestors are watching. Table for one. The blast. Hey, on you now. All right, so we'll drop him there, there, and we'll let that uh, hit us. That'll be okay. We're probably going to heal up with a Citrus Courier. Just thinking here the best way to uh, maximize what we want to do. Adventure calls. 
I actually think we're gonna go with this. Oh, they didn't. Thought they would block. All right, so now we got the Citrus Courier. We got a rally going on. Oh, you know what? I actually probably should have played the Racer Scale. Um, with that mana deposit, I could have played multiple uh, cards there. All right, so we will just attack like this and should be good for ending the game. So Tom Kench does cost four mana, so it does take a little bit to get him on board, and he's really the one that's facilitating our capture and cloning playstyle. Alright, let's see here. I think we'll actually go with the monkey idol since this is constantly going to be damaging itself um, and buffing itself up this will be great to capture just to give a unit a whole bunch of stats potentially um, we might not end up playing it because it's a pretty low tempo play uh, but still better than the other units or the other cards the other ones just cost too much Alright, so this actually will be pretty good. So, quite often, since we're creating a copy in hand um, of whatever spell we capture, and it's not fleeting, normally we end up with having too many cards. So having some discard synergy would actually be um, pretty decent. The other ones are also pretty good, but I think this will probably work out best for us. Yeah, let's go for the item chest. Alright, this actually looks uh, not bad. Our one drop is always very um, strong. Unfortunately, the epic item isn't really going to um, help us. At least not at the moment. Always good to have Citrus Courier and a nice cheap Roar of the Slayer. So yeah, the, um, the Proto Belt, it's reduced your cost of the most expensive ally. Um, but the ally has to be... Um, or most expensive champion ally, but that champion has to be on the board. So it doesn't really help with cards that um, you're playing before your champion. Alright, so since they're out of mana, we will just play our other Crusty Codger. So we'll just be able to play Roar of the Slayer, discarding our Scion since he's actually just going to get put back into our deck. So some nice cheap removal there. Let's just get some good damage down and then play a Citrus Courier. <laughs> so sadly we didn't get uh, Tom Kench there. Our deck is working out so well we're ending the game before we can even really play Tom Kench and start cloning everything. I think getting more of the Roar of the Slayer will be pretty nice, although 4 cost decimates not bad. Yep, I'm fine with more Roar of the Slayer. We're going to cut Razor Scale. Uh, normally it's just too expensive. Alright, 
So Boctopus got pretty good um, additional stats. Codger, uh, regen's always good. Get rid of the Sandhopper here. Tom Kench is one of the best one, two cost combo cards. Like they just work out so well together. So we're going to discard Scion here. Getting rid of their Trickster will be pretty nice. And we'll just discard the Monkey Idol as well to kill Zoe. Always good to kill Zoe whenever possible. We'll have to pay attention to what card they generate. Alright, the messenger, that's not too bad. Alright, we'll try to see if we can play our two car cards here. Alright, again, able to get rid of a Zoe. Very, very nice. Sad that we didn't get uh, Tom K Kench again. Hopefully we'll draw one here. Nope, another Scion. Perfect. Uh... Yeah, we'll just play a Sandhopper here. Alright, so I'm going to have, yeah, I'll have this guy, well, let's see. So we can still do the captures even without Tom Kench, since we picked up a Bayou Brunch. I think we'll just try to spread the stats out, especially since we don't have Overwhelm. So I'll let our cheap unit um, grab our Codger. And the reason we chose this is since he's one cost, he's now um, zero cost, we can just play him again for free. With the impact, we know we're at least going to get uh, the Nexus damage, that way you can play the Citrus Courier. Just thinking who I want to challenge here. I think we'll grab the uh, Messenger. They're probably going to block our Codger with the Stellar Corn, which would be a little sad. Yep. Always good to plan and think ahead on what the AI is going to do. Alright, so now we can grab the Stellacorn since we are strong enough to um, survive. Alright, we're just gonna play and get rid of Scion. Kill their unit. Again, they have another copy of Zoe. Uh, a little unfortunate. Man, still. Alright, we're gonna 
see if we can go fishing for Tom Kench. Nope. Well, that sucks. But this unit now has Overwhelm. And we'll end the game here. Yeah, Tom Kench does have a pretty good baseline deck. So he is a champion that even if you don't draw him, you'll still be able to do pretty well. Alright, at least we'll get some more copies of Tom Kench here. Yeah, we'll go with the Colossal Hammer. We already have a good amount of health. Wild Inspiration, this is going to be uh, very nice. Um, Tom Kench, the cards that he creates are obviously created cards, but then also every time we capture a card and we create a copy in hand, that will also count as a created card. Um, so this will actually help us out a lot. Very good that we grab that. And we'll go for the champion node just so we can get some more copies of Tom Kench. So we can actually start showcasing more what the build is supposed to be and not just winning without ever playing Tom Kench. <laughs> uh. Alright. The Iceborne Gauntlet is very nice for Tom. Uh, this counts for um, capturing a unit, so this will actually create a copy in hand. So that's pretty great. Getting that um, Nomad's Medallion, also pretty nice. Yeah, we'll hold on to Roar the Slayer. It's a pretty good card. Nice, we got our Tom Kench. Um, since the Monkey Idol just cost one, yeah, we'll play that here. And the Lounging Lizard. So I'm a little worried about playing um, Tom here. The Arbiter of the Peak has a capture landmark. So I don't think I actually want to play that immediately. I'll just attack first and see what they play. Alright, so that's not bad. All right, I'm going to capture the lizard. Getting those stats on Tom will be pretty nice, and we should be able to play him for free. Alright, very nice. So this is really starting to showcase um, how the build is supposed to orient or work. You're trying to capture units so you can then play um, potentially for free. Giving you just a massive army of units. Um, we'll actually play the Roar of the Slayer here. We want to be able to kill their lifesteal unit. We're going to keep capturing our Lounging Lizard. Close enough. Oh, see, there's that capture card. But just gave us all of our Lizards back. And that's the annoying thing, is since it's a landmark, you're much less likely to be able to do something about it. Very few decks or champions in Path of Champions 
um, have a card baseline that can kill a landmark. We're just going to get a good amount of damage down, play Citrus Courier, and potentially end the game. Strong body, strong Glad we were at least able to get Tom Kenj out there for a bit and starting to showcase what you can do. Yeah, Arbiter of the Peak can be rough, especially if you're playing a deck like Teemo, Diana, Jax. LeBlanc, any of those decks where you're really focused just on your champion. It's quite often you'll play your champion, they'll throw down that landmark and just capture it. And as you saw there, they have many copies of it. And so sometimes they'll just play it back to back right at the start of the game and really screw you over. Alright, more copies of Tom Kench, Black Cleaver. That'll be nice. Transfusion is pretty good. Nab nah, not really hap or not really great. Um, getting a endurance would be pretty good. Perfect. So endurance essentially the same thing as what our star power is of when our units get damaged, give them or grant them one one. So Transfusion is pretty strong. We are at 30 cards, or 31. All right, we have another shop and we have an epic item chest. Oof, I'm not sure which one of those I want. So we already have pretty a pretty full board. So even though Transfusion can be a great card for Tom, because essentially that deal one is actually just as good as giving an ally the one one, potentially better. I think we'll hold off for now. Hmm. Yeah, I think we'll go for the shop and try to get another power. But that epic item chest was pretty tempting. Yeah, Endurance is pretty much always good to get for Tom Kench. Because it just makes you better at what you're already trying to do. Alright, we'll hold on to Scion as discard fodder. We'll re-roll the Lounging Lizards, though. And we'll get rid of the Ravenous Flock for right now. We're going to try to get some lower cost cards. Didn't necessarily work too much on that. So we'll discard Scion, since he'll go back in the deck. It's a big responsibility to Shepherd Star. Alright, Monkey Idol has the mana deposit. So we'll play that since it's essentially for free. So yeah, we'll attack here, see if they block. Nice. You always want to get rid of the Star Shepherds if you can, um, because sometimes they'll just start scaling out of control because they get increased power whenever someone gets healed. Right, and again, Monkey Idol for free. And now we can play our Tom Kench. A little luck for those who need it. All right, invoke gem. I think we want to get rid of their um, mountain goat the most. Yeah. 
And now since it was a two cost card, it got reduced down twice, once from the Wild Inspiration, the other one from our two star power. So we could just play it for free. Um, we won't though, since we have two monkey idols and uh, they're gonna generate those powder monkeys. So this is the good and bad thing about Tom, is your created cards aren't fleeting, so you can plan them out on when you want to play them, but sometimes it can fill up your um, board quite a lot. Alright, I'm just going to grab one of these monkey idols, essentially just getting all the stats from it. Yeah, Crescent Strike's not, uh, not bad. All right, we're going to play this here just to kill another one of their um, cards, as well as summoning our Reborn Grenadier. The Poro is going to get um, obliterated though, but that's fine. So we'll stun both of these, should be able to just then attack with all of our units, and end the game. Yes, perfect. So with this playstyle, you are much more um, controlling the board. But unlike most control decks, you're not using stuns or frostbites, you're just... Um, having big units, and you're trying to capture their units, control who they can play. Ooh, game start, that'll be very nice. We shouldn't need this entry to draw a champion, since we already have now guaranteed draw for the start of the game. Summon his thing, officer, not bad. Pretty much all of these are decent cards for us, um, but I'm just not wanting our deck to get too um, too full of random cards. We're trying to be as consistent as possible. All right, we'll get rid of the Sandhopper. He really is kind of the weakest link. Yeah, even like the Monkey Idol better actually. Just never really liked the Sandhopper for Tom Kench, personally. So, one fun thing you can do with um, Tom is you can actually capture enemy champions, and they'll still be a created copy of them in your hand. So, if you want to capture enemy champions and then just start playing their own champions against them. Uh, that is something you're able to do, which is pretty funny. Alright, playing Lounging Lizard round one, not bad. And yeah, I'll drop the Monkey Idol. So we can start scaling up. So they're potentially going to... Um, use a Vengeance here, which not going to be that big of a deal. Kind of good to get them out of the way and just use them on our followers before we play our champions. Oh, they didn't actually use it. That's somewhat surprising. Sadly, we don't have Spell Shield on Tom Kench yet, so... With all those stats, he's kind of asking to get <laughs> vengeance. Oh, urination. Um, yeah, that's fine. So they used all of their mana to do that, but we have that fleeting copy of Tom Kench still. And we can just build out our board relatively easily. Put me in, Tommy boy. 
This is the great thing about in the mid game, if you do lose a lot of your units, you're just able to clone out um, another full board pretty fast. Like right here, since we have these acquired tastes, if they had a card, we could use this, um, or we could just use a discard to kill more units and summon um, others. So we're first going to play Monkey Idol here. We do want to capture some of their units and cards, but again, they have um, Vengeance for 4 mana, so we're not wanting to capture a card and then immediately get Vengeance. So we're going to hold off um, for right now. Alright, perfect. They played all of their mana on Viego. Just trying to see if there's a thing through a way if we could kill Viego, but I don't think so because we only have two offensive spells. But we'd have to use one to get through a spell shield. But if we use that, <laughs> the roar of the slayer won't get, go through to kill him. Also, we can't capture um, ephemeral units. Because what happens with Acquired Taste is it strikes Tom, and then since it's ephemeral, it dies before you can actually capture it. Alright, here I think I'll just get rid of their unit. We'll use the Apprehend to get rid of his Spell Shield. And we can play this nice and slow because they don't have any mana. So here, we'll be able to capture a Viego. Tom Kench is more than strong enough to take the hit. And we can now play a Viego against them, which is pretty awesome. So here, even though we have zero mana, um, our Bayou Brunch costs zero, because it's fleeting, and let's create a card, then also the Chalice. And then we're going to create a zero cost copy of our Boctopus. Now since he leveled up, he's going to release all captured allies but he's going to obliterate captured enemies. So we now have a nice full board and we could even replenish it for free um, if we weren't about to just end the game. That worked out quite nice. That is one thing I really like with the new uh, Tom Kench. It's how there's a lot more depth to his um, his kit than you would probably think. Especially if you're doing a build like this where you're focusing on those captures. Um, yeah, Trifarian might be decent, giving us some more removal. We'll go for the item chest. But yeah, when you're playing Tom Kench, focusing on the captures, there's so many interesting um, and different builds or different approaches you can try to do during combat. And so I think he's actually one of the characters that um, the more you play him, the more you'll see interesting combos you can do. And he'll kind of have the highest degree or one of the highest degrees of mastery.
Nice. Alright, we'll play the Boctopus here. Our units might get captured because they, again, have a very annoying capture card. And there it is. Uh, yeah, and they're not gonna block. Capture cards are so annoying to deal with. Alright, we'll drop another Boctopus here. So some of our units will die, but we'll get our capture card, our captured unit back. We also do have some good sustaining health potion and courier. We'll hold on to the health potion just in case we need it later. So I'm not a big fan of having to play Tom Kench here because he could just play another capture card, but uh, I feel like we have to risk it in this case. Alright. It is said that all of our spells are slow, so we can't use them um, reactively to like save our units. So we won't be able to play this one for free. Um, I do want to get rid of one of their bigger, scarier units. Although, just in case Tom Kench gets captured, I don't want that to get released and have its effect go off again. No, oh, it'll just do that. <laughs> Perfect. So when you're playing against the Spiderling, it's always good to kill the Spiderlings. Uh, they all have the Crystal Carrier, and quite often they'll just fill up the board with this unit, and then they'll just get a massive amount of mana. Alright, so we're going to play the Grenadier to uh, kill some of their units and hopefully keep them from attacking. Often if you have those ephemeral units, uh, you might... It helps determine whether or not they will bother attacking, but if they have overwhelming cards, they normally still will. Uh, nice. As you can see here, like I said before, Spiderling doesn't have any items on it, despite the fact that all of theirs have that Crystal Carrier. So, a little disappointing, but would probably just be too <laughs> overpowered if you got all of their items as well. I'm sure there's something from so here we're just going to attack. We don't want them to be able to um, capture our Tom Kench here. So we'll open attack and then play um, Citrus Courier. Alright, so good thing they are out of cards. So we'll probably end the game here, but if we didn't have Overwhelm or if our units were a bit weaker, what I would do with the cloning playstyle is I would attack here, get as much damage down as possible, and then I would use our Bayou Brunch to capture our courier, 
we'd get another copy that should cost, um, I believe two. It's gonna get discounted twice because of wild inspiration and our second star power. So then we'd be able to play another Citrus Courier, Rally again, and then um, end the game. We won't need to do that because we have enough damage, but that's one thing you could um, do in this situation. Because yeah, some of those units that have very strong play effects, you can just keep copying them, so you can keep playing those um, cards over and over again. I think actually the Crystal Carrier would be nice, being able to play him in the first round, and then getting that extra mana crystal so that when we're um, we'll have four mana in the second round and be able to play Tom Kench. I think that'd be pretty nice. So Elixir of Sorcery really doesn't have any point at all because it's just going to kill the enemy. Um, the one good effect for it is that it'll get rid of spell shields. Um, which wouldn't be bad against like the Dawn Speakers up next, but I feel like mana deposit for the Monkey Idol would be better. But I'm actually gonna try for well, okay, we'll save our rerolls for the shop. Um, we'll go for the Monkey Idol since essentially we can play the card for free then. Slow but steady actually sucks for Tom Kench generally, because since all of your spells are slow, they would all get try to get doubled, but they're all capture cards, so doubling the effect doesn't really do anything. Again, the one good thing with it is that with Tom Kench, his two-cost capture an enemy um, card that he has, uh, since that happens twice, you're able to essentially capture spell shielded units, since the first one will get rid of spell shield. And then the second one will let you capture. So it has some use cases, but not quite as good as you would think for a champion that has all slow spells. But I want to try to get something a bit better here. Um, that's not bad. But again, hoping for... Fix Rupper is actually pretty good for... Um, is pretty good for Tom Kench. Alright, let's use a reroll here, see if we can get some... Uh, I was hoping for an item on a card we already had. Hmm. I think I'm actually going to grab Colleen Strike for one. It's only going to cost one, but then against Galio and all of his formidable units, they all have zero power, so Colleen Strike will just be able to kill them. So, I think this will actually be pretty funny against um, Galio. Single combat, um, pretty good, especially for Tom Kench. Uh, but since we already got a card, I don't want to fill up our deck too much. So we'll take on the Dawn Speakers. We'll hold on to the Ravenous Flock, actually. Uh, the Dawn Speakers we probably won't be able to kill, but we will actually damage them, most likely. Um, so this will probably be able to go off. It'll hit their Spell Shield, but that Champion Summon will work. Also, having Scion here um, increases our odds of drawing uh, Tom Kench, since we only have two copies of Scion. So we have 50% of them, whereas we have a lot more Tom Kench. There we go. If you don't know, once you hit level 20, um, for any champion, their level up, you get the power of Hero's Welcome, so game start, draw a champion. So if you already have the support champion, uh, you're more likely to then draw your other champion just because you have more copies of them that are still in your deck. So 
So often the Dawn Speakers play a cheap, like one cost card. Uh, I'm actually going to play the Grenadier here so that we can get rid of or discard Scion and hopefully kill one of them. Now, this will mean we won't have enough mana for Tom Kench next turn, but I think this will be pretty decent. Oh, right. <laughs> Oh, I forgot about the fact he's just going to immediately do that. Alright, nice. Got rid of the Dawn Speakers. So, their whole effect of having Dawn Speakers is now just gone. Alright, Stone Expressor. Really annoying. But let's just kill it. New recruit reporting in. I'm actually here for our allies. Sorry. Okay. Not able to kill two of theirs, having both of ours survive and just get a lot stronger. And we'll be able to play Tom Kench next turn. this. Perfect. <laughs> I'm glad we're not actually ending the game here. I uh, wanted to go on a little bit longer just so we can showcase more of Tom Kench's cloning. Guess it wanted us to win then anyways. Alright, more copies of Tom Kench. Great. Vampire Acceptor. Bit more sustain. Always decent. How many copies of Tom Kench do we have actually? Nine. I actually don't know if I've ever seen that many copies. Like, almost a fourth of our deck is Tom Kench. After the healer, it's gonna be, yeah. I actually like, all right, Ravenous Flock, we don't get to use it very often, um, so we'll just get rid of that. <laughs> so yeah, like a fourth of our deck is Tom Kench. That's uh that's pretty funny. Time to make an impact. Alright, so since we have the Farsight, we will um we will both Tom Kench. Pretty awesome that Boctopus got that uh Titan Axe, or whatever it's called. Yeah, Titan's Axe. Nice. Um, we'll get rid of the Health Potion. We don't really need it immediately. Even though we haven't gotten too many crazy, um, like, long capture matches, I hope this has showcased what you can really do um, with Tom Kench. Alright, so we'll just be able to get rid of their Shivana immediately. Amazing. Now, with that Crystal Carrier, we'll be able to play Tom Kench on turn two. Ooh, that Spirit Stone will be fun. And we'll get rid of their Shivana again. No! <laughs> another another capture card. But what we'll be able to do with this 
is just have two Tom Kenches. Alright, so since they don't have the attack token, we can play this a little bit slower. Uh, what we could do would be pretty funny is use a Tom Kench to capture the other Tom Kench. Um, but we're actually going to capture our Boctopus so that we can then replay them. Always something you want to look out for is seeing what units you can copy to then play for um, free. Are we just going to end the game right here? Yes, we are. <laughs> uh, beautiful. So this has been our um, cloning Tom Kench build. The games actually ended a bit faster than I would have thought. We did get uh, that legendary unstable power, which was pretty nice. And then we did throw on the Overwhelm just so that, again, games could end pretty fast. Um, but yeah, being able to capture units, both enemies and your own, and then start cloning them. Um, very, very fun. Gives you a lot more depth when you're playing Top Kench and just more options, which I always like. Hope this um, showcased, the, showcased the build enough for you. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you do like the video, definitely like and subscribe as we're putting out daily Path of Champions content. All right, I hope you all have a great day. Thank you for watching that whole video and thank you to everyone who has subscribed. We've hit over a thousand subscribers in under three months. Thank you so much for the support. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, like the video. We're putting out daily videos covering everything Path of Champions related. I hope you guys have a great end of your year and a great start to your new year.